Hey, everybody. I'm Ryan Little, and you're listening to the Filmmaking Friends podcast, episode number 12. Today, we're hanging out with full-time filmmaker, actor, and good friend, Miss Melanie Stone. This girl is unstoppable. We're going to talk about the auditioning process and how she prepares for that, as well as the mindset she has going into that room. She's got some great tricks and tips. Enjoy. Melanie, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for being on my little podcast. So for those of you who don't know who Melanie Stone is, she's been in lots and lots of great things, and we've worked on lots of great things together. She's probably best well known for the Mythica series, um, and I certainly don't want to tell you what it is about because I'll probably mess it up. So Melanie, it's five movies. Yes. Just give us the sweet elevator pitch of what oh. that series is about, or at least what the first one's about, because we want people to see it. Right. Okay. So I think the easiest way to describe it is um, it is a D&D campaign, and it follows the story of a runaway slave who is also cursed with the power of necromancy. And she basically gets this team together. You know, she finds a rogue, a warrior, and a priestess, you know, right. hence a D&D campaign. Right. And they go on these adventures and uh, defeat evil in the end. Well, spoiler. I mean, they might. We don't know. Well, Check it out on Amazon kind of been, Prime. It'd be kind of a downer if uh, they just got beat up for five, for five movies. Oh, they get beat up. <laughs> and now you just mentioned you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Yes. The whole series. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Now, you can also buy it, though, of course, too. Yeah, you right? can buy it. It comes in a... I think it actually comes in a set. Because I have Walmart. it in a set, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it comes in a set. That's cool. I'm pretty sure that you had done the first Mythica at least before I met you. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure. I've seen you in a bunch of movies, but I think... Yeah, I think you had that one out of the way. You might even have number two done, possibly. I, I think, can't remember. I think we'd finished three. Definitely four and five you hadn't done, for sure. I remember that yeah. clearly. But, yeah, maybe you haven't done three, yeah. Um, and I remember, and I, for the life of me, I cannot remember what we were trying to cast at the time. But anyway, trying to cast something. And somebody recommended you to me, and I, I, they gave me either the first Mythica to see or some kind of a stunt reel or whatever. You know, watching you, very captivating to watch. And then also you have these mad uh, fighting skills. At least I think you do. Thank you. I think you do. So where does that come from? Where does the, I mean, Mythica is a, a lot of action and stuff, but was mm -hmm. that, did you learn that on that show or did you do that before? Is that like, were you a professional ninja before? Yeah, you, is that how you got the you job? You know what? Like, where did that come from? I like to think of myself as a professional ninja. <laughs> no, um, honestly, just growing up, I... I'm paying for it now, but as a kid, I was the type who's like, yeah, let's go jump off this building right. and let's go. Like, I I remember writing a paper, I think it was junior high. Um, we got to pick a career that we would research and I researched a stunt woman and I was like, I'm going to be a stunt woman. Oh. Um, and I just, I loved adventuring and, and um, yeah. I, I never took any type of martial arts classes when I was younger or gymnastics. But I did have a neighbor who, um, she took gymnastics. And when she'd get home from her class, she'd come over and teach me everything that she learned. Oh. So um, I, yeah, I was, I was sneaky that way. I would like find people who already had it and I'd yeah. like get them to teach me without having to pay. But um, no, I just, I, I love doing it. And I, yeah. um, in my backyard, I would have like, sword fight battles with my siblings and um yeah it was it was just something that i en enjoyed doing yeah well just I, I like i said everything i saw was like wow she's got some serious skills like it was really cool like, uh, thank you i think there was like you know some sword play there probably was some stuff with staffs yeah. i mean there might have been bow staff, bow staff. Yeah. yes yeah. that's probably what I, yes i think that's what i saw i was like wow that's killer yeah so let's go back a little bit mm -hmm. um where did your love for film for films in general come from like what when did you decide in your life like this is yeah i want to work in the film industry like what was it that triggered that for you do you remember yeah i mean i i've said this before and i i i'm and I think it was, I mean, there were other films that I think inspired me. But Lord of the Rings, when The Fellowship came out, I saw it nine times in theaters. And I was in junior high. I couldn't drive. So I, like, convinced my sister to take me or my mom or whoever could drive. I'd get them to take me. Right. But um, 
I remember watching those films and, and thinking like, this is, somebody is getting paid to do this. <laughs> like someone, someone gets to do this for a living. And I, I want that to be me. Like I, right. and I always, I always loved stories growing up. I mm-hmm. mean, I was, I was putting on plays as a kid or, yeah. um, I had, um, I used to have this book of monsters that I created. Like I would um, draw a picture of this scary monster and then I'd have like on the side, I'd talk about um, like its strengths and its weaknesses and how to kill it. And so me and That's my friends- That's very D&D like, right, just saying. But just so you know, I didn't play D&D until I was an adult. Nobody introduced oh, really? me to it. I didn't know where the D&D players were. I didn't, oh. even, I didn't even know D&D was a thing until I was on Mythica and Jake had, you know, he was- a bigger nerd than I was. Well, now you have to clarify who Jake, Jake is. Stormone. I know Sorry. who Jake Stormone. So Jake Stormone. In fact, he's such a nerd about that. Uh, if we both look over there to the right, he's actually he's literally playing a D and D esque yeah. game. He's fighting orcs. I think yeah. it's WoW. I think he's playing WoW. I don't know what he's I playing. Know. I just know that he is a big geek. Right. Yeah. So he was a bigger nerd than I was, and um, so he explained to me what D and D was and, yeah. and the awesomeness that it is and. I have played D and D since then, and it's, I, I am upset that it wasn't something that I learned as a kid because I think I would have been like killer at it. Oh, like, especially with your monster book and yes, I had all a monster. The attributes and of the monsters. Me yes. and my friends, we would go hunting for them, and I was oh, like, I, you know, we'd find the monster, and it was like, yeah. cool, we're gonna. Yeah. This is look, turn to page eight. Right. It's this monster. This is how we kill it. Now, like you said, that kind of stuff happens in Mythica. The very first um, feature that you did, where mm-hmm. you had, and, I'm just, um, and when I say that, I mean like not so much as an extra, but like had dialogue. Mm-hmm. What what was that movie? It was a Christmas movie. Oh, called... I was gonna say, I was gonna, I meant to say, does it have monsters in it? But right. you cr- clearly right. told me it's a Christmas movie, so maybe not. Maybe not. Most of my work is either. Um, fantasy or christmas movies nice <laughs> in fact there's blend. a there's a fantasy christmas movie that i am in oh i've uh, seen it christmas dragon i have seen that movie <laughs> and i don't remember if there's bow staff fighting in it but there, there is, is. There yes is. there's some really good action in there and then there's some dragons there's, dra- there's and yet dragons. somehow at the end you want to have you know i don't know little eggnog and some uh, shortbread cookies or Absolutely. something after watching it absolutely then yeah. Yeah. Yes, that makes yeah. me that makes me happy. But my first movie was um, I was a small role, Christmas, movie, yeah. Christmas for a dollar, uh, was directed by John Lyde, mm-hmm. and um, I was I played a fourteen year old. I think I was like twenty four at the time. I played a fourteen. I played uh, or fifteen year old. Well, you played well, you were playing I a played, teenager. Okay. Yeah, I was playing. Yeah. I was playing a teenager, and yeah, um, yeah it was very eye opening. Yeah, I, I prior to that, I just did theater. I was a theater kid, and yeah. Um, so transitioning over to film, I was like, what? We shoot out a sequence? We don't get to rehearse this scene 90 times before we perform it? You know, uh, it was, yeah. that was like a, that was hard for me to adjust to. Mm. The idea of standing on a mark, was that all foreign to you at that point? Or well, do you already kind of know that stuff? In theater, you know, we had oh, marks. Okay. So that sure. was fine. But I think, um, yeah, just shooting out of sequence and the yeah. idea of like, I was so used to rehearsing a play over and over and really like delving into characters. Oh, okay. And, and um, whereas in film, it's like, cool, you show up and you're doing this one scene. Mm-hmm. And so you just got to make sure that yeah. you do the emotional prep before and you know, you track, you track where you are. Yeah. And that's your responsibility. I think I was kind of waiting for someone to like come over and like coach me into it and be like, hey, yeah. all right, so prior to this, this happened and um, let's talk about your character. I mean, there yeah. was that, I mean, especially with indie film, it's like, no, do your homework, do your homework. And, yeah. And- <laughs> well, and that just the fact that a lot of times with indie films, you're on a very short, shoot oh schedule. yeah so you're shooting yeah. a lot of pages and it's like there isn't really time to have much of a yeah, discussion it's like mm-hmm. um we have to shoot this because the sun is going to be gone in 10 minutes and right. we have four pages so you know just do your best right right just do whatever you think is right. good right and I, we need to roll okay. exactly and then there's no discussion exactly you there's just, no just go discussion and you see what they do in editing i guess right know? right um i think though just not getting off topic but i think you know the trait of a good director is someone, one of the things that they should discuss with you as you go into a scene, if time permits, is to say, hey, listen, just as a reminder, you know, here's where you came from. Mm-hmm. Here's, again, maybe the main purpose this scene is in the is in the show, and then right. where we're going, at least to give you that perspective, you know, and if you cast well, 
Um, and I know that when I've had the opportunity to cast you in something, obviously I've entrusted you with knowing the character better than I know the character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so that's what's great about casting is if you cast well, those people know and have thought about it and internalized that mm -hmm. character. And I know that's what you do. Yeah, I try. Um, I try. No, you're very good at it. Um, I'm intrigued a little bit about the experience of being an actor in L.A. I feel for actors because you guys are constantly auditioning and... I don't know what the percentage is of what you feel like you book to what you audition for, but it's it's got to be low for everybody. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more rejection than there is getting that part you want. It just that's just how it is for pretty much everybody. That's just the reality of it, yeah. right? Yeah. So how how do you um, internalize, or what do you do to kind of know going in? Okay, I've got to I've got to be focused. I got to be prepared. But at the same time, it is possible I'm not going to get this part. I mean. Mm -hmm. How do, you, how do you deal with that day in and day out, auditioning and maybe not getting some of the things you want or right. whatever? How do you, what's, what do you do to, to deal with that? So I, I'm still figuring it out, but I can, yeah. I can share with you what I am trying to put into practice yeah. that I've heard from other people who I admire and I think are doing it right. Right. Uh, but I once heard someone say, uh, and he, he was talking about himself, um, you're not getting the part. So go in there and perform. You get oh, to perform. Interesting. Guess what? Like you you get to perform today. Like don't don't go oh, in there thinking like right. I need this job, I need this job. <laughs> yeah. Cuz the reality is like you're probably not going to get it. Mhm. Mm yeah. So go in there. It's awesome that you get the opportunity to perform in front of somebody. Okay. So do that. that go sense. in there. And, and use it as an opportunity to do what you love. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's tough because I struggle in the room. I get very distracted every time I'm in a new environment. I mean, it's, it's so hard to prepare for the room because it's different every time. And so yeah. it's like, okay, you can take a class, but it's still not going to prepare you because it's different every single time. Right. The only way you get better at it is by doing it over and over and over and over again. But yeah. But yeah, going in there and I think just treating it as if like you're you're just grateful to to get to do what you love. You get to yeah. you get to perform and you get to be you and you know you're probably too short or your hair isn't the right length or whatever other reason it is you're not getting the part, like don't worry about it. Yeah. You don't need to worry about that. Um that's the other thing is like don't obsess over why you didn't get it. And I that's something that I need to put into practice is it's like, don't, don't worry about it. It's don't not your it, problem. Don't take it too personal. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Like don't, yeah. uh, yeah, just, and, and forget about it. Like you go in there, you, you do the work, yeah. you leave and you, and you just start working on the next one. Now, you know? <laughs> now sometimes you go into an audition that you really feel you're right for. Mm -hmm. And you may know the people that are in the room. Mm -hmm. and so you might feel a little more comfortable. Mm -hmm. you've, done the, you've done the homework. And you're off book. You know your lines. Yeah. You're really going to kill it. You know you look exactly the way it was described in the yeah. script. You know, like, yeah, I've got to be like a serious contender for this. Yeah. But at the same time, when you, when you feel like, hey, I might have a fighting chance here. Yeah. Are there times when somewhere in the middle of the audition or something, you're like, I can tell, I can sense I'm not going to get this. What are some crazy things that like people just like start tuning out? Does that happen? <laughs> I, uh, I never do it. Even if I know I'm not going to cast a person, I right, am like, I right. watch. I, I want them to believe that I'm supporting them. Even if I can say like, this person's not going to be right. I'm still supporting. Yeah. But I mean, do people yeah. literally like just tune you out oh, sometimes? Oh, totally. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. There was this one audition and it almost like when it's happened. Okay. So I'll tell you the story. So I go in for this audition. And um, it wasn't anything that I was like, I want this bad. But it was fun. It was like a sci-fi something or other. Right. And so I go in and, and you know, I start doing the scene. And um, they have a laptop. One of them has a laptop up. And I, in the middle of the scene, all of a sudden, I just hear like, click, 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 click. Like this person isn't even like looking at me. It's just like typing so loudly oh. on their computer. And it was just like, it was just this weird moment of like, I, what are you like? I'm so curious what you're doing right now. Right. Did I do something that you're like, you just had to take note of immediately? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand. But in that moment, it was like, 
whatever. I, like, you don't want to work. I, I don't want to work with you, you know? So all of a sudden it took yeah. this edge off. It's like, why, why do you want to, like, why would you want to work with someone who doesn't, who doesn't value you? Right. You know? So yeah. it almost, it almost, sure, it's, it's, it feels disrespectful, but at the yeah. same time, it's like, well, at least I know now. At least I'm yeah. not on set with you and figuring out that yeah. you don't respect my time. <laughs> yeah, you figured it out before you've gone down <laughs> right, that road. Right, right. You yeah, know, but I, sure. I mean, there's so many things like that where you're like, cool, they're not listening or someone will like walk in in the middle of the audition and da 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 da. You know, yeah. there's so many different... Oh, uh, yeah, like, in the woods. Like yeah. La La Land is such a good example. Oh, yeah, uh, where she takes a call oh, or something man. happens. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, Emma Stone, that moment where she's like, she's doing this scene and she's like so connected and she's yeah. in it. Then, then someone, yeah, literally like interrupts the scene. Yeah. And it was like, oh, that is so... Yeah. relatable like yeah. that's so that's like every day for every actor <laughs> well it's funny I am a little sensitive just thinking about this too when I've gone to uh, depending on the space obviously but I've tried to always make sure that if we're in a place that has a big window or something that the actor is not with their back to it mm -hmm. because then the actor becomes in self-conscious like oh these people if anything happens behind me that could distract them mm -hmm. from me so I always try to make sure that the actor feels like they're in a position where there will be There's no distractions for us on. who are right. observing them. Well, that's super nice of you. <laughs> I mean, I try. I mean, not every room, you know, will do right, that. Right. But I want them to bring their A game, and I right. don't. I want to reduce as many of the things that they would that are they might be uptight about as much as possible. Right. I want to see them right. at their very best because well, they've spent that time to come. Yeah, that's. What, go ahead. Sorry. I, oh, I. I love that things are gearing more towards self tape. I know that there's yeah, a lot of actors true. who are like, no, no, I much prefer in the room. Like, no, no, don't waste my time bringing me in the room if you're not even remotely interested. Right. How about I submit a tape and if you see something that you like, yeah, yeah then then bring me in to audition for you in person. Yeah, but like, yeah. I love that self tapes are becoming the norm. Like, yeah, I, for sure. Because because I can give my best performance you know yeah. auditioning is so strange like it's in the room it's just so yeah. I, I don't think uh, I don't know I, I don't think that you can truly see someone's ability sure I guess that there are people who can kill it in the audition room sure. but that is a I believe a separate skill mm. than what someone can do on set yeah uh, I agree I and so yeah. I I love that self tapes are becoming well a more normal thing you're definitely in more control of a self tape. You can be in an environment. You can prepare. You can, there's there's a lot of benefits to self tape. Oh, totally. And of course, and of course, if you do self tape, there's a and you, and they love it. There's a high probability they'll bring you back for mm -hmm. the director session because they're gonna want to meet you. Right. Because as a director, I might see your self tape and go, okay, this Millie mm -hmm. Stone girl, she's insane. Mm -hmm. She's killing it on the tape. Yeah. I've seen her with a bow staff. She swings really good. <laughs> 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 whatever um, let's bring her in because I want you to in the room I want to have time to meet with you because I want to sort of see that you're a human being oh too, totally yeah you know and because, I get that yeah Absolutely. so you so but but you're right you know but if you can do self-tape first yeah the first sure. rounds first rounds well, just self-tapes so like what is it what is it like okay so you do a traditional audition you come in right mm -hmm. and then you're reading against someone like sometimes when is, I think this is great when this happens. I've only been able to do this a couple of times where you actually bring in another really good actor to read opposite. I feel like that helps you when you audition because the person who's reading is like giving you something to work with. Mm -hmm. Whereas you read with the casting director who couldn't be worse, mm -hmm. potentially, or their assistant, <laughs> right? Is that hard? How do you, I mean, how do you, how are you able, you've practiced this audition and, and you come in and then the person you're reading reads it totally deadpan, mm -hmm. like, doesn't try to like put yeah. in any breaks or pauses. They just blah 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 sure, blah blah. And sure. then you're trying to make something with that, but they're not giving you anything. Right. What, what what is there a trick or anything uh, you can yes, do? Yes, there is a trick. Oh, what um, is that? Because I I have asked that question before, and I have uh, I was told by an acting coach use that if someone isn't giving you anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Use that. How frustrating is it when you're having a conversation with somebody and they're not giving you anything? And yeah. so all of a sudden, it's like, lean into that. Let that oh. be something that, you know, oh. get okay. them to try and connect with them. Yeah. You, you you can connect with someone. That's not giving you anything. You can. 
Why you not? absolutely can because it's your perception. It's your perception. Oh, so okay. whatever they're feeling, mm-hmm. that doesn't whatever. Like mm-hmm. you can it's up to you. Interesting. It's up to you. you now, is that something that. you realized early on, or did it take you a while to kind of figure that out? Like, oh my gosh, this lady's killing me. She's giving me nothing. Or did you immediately learn that early on? Um, I I learned that early on, oh, but okay. it took a while. It took a while to like yeah. apply it. Actually, I don't mind the deadpan. It's when someone is being like gimmicky or fake in a read. Oh. When they when they're being like self conscious about it. Like mm. I I've read with people where I'm like, this person is so nervous about reading that it's like. I just want them to, I wish that they would just be deadpan about yeah, it. <laughs> like, yeah. I wish that they would just give me nothing. <laughs> yeah. So that way I'm not sitting here thinking, like, I'm worried about this person reading right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. So what, let me ask you this question because I'm always fascinated about how actors feel about auditioning. What about, like, being off book? Are you always about being off book? It was funny because I love it when actors are off book because I feel like that means that they've taken the time to really right. learn it. But then there are some people that's like, oh, no, no, no. I'm off book, but then I kind of pretend like I'm not, so I have the pages, mm. but I kind of only glance at them slightly. Yeah. But it's but it's like it gives them the illusion that I just learned it like a minute ago. Right. It's like I don't, some, I'm like well, yeah. I don't know about that. I I on set I I want to have a mini experience with you in the cast room that is going to give me foreshadowing of what it's going to be on set. And if you're like. Uh, I need, um, uh, uh, I right. need to look at my pages. I'm thinking I'm not going to make my day because this person's going right. to need 15 takes. Right. I think that just depends on the actor you're talking to. Me, I, I must be off book in order for me to give a good audition. Like yeah. I just, I can't, I cannot be thinking about the lines. I can't be thinking about yeah. this or that. And 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 here's the thing, you know. Sure, I guess. Yeah. No, no one's going to fault you for coming into the room and glancing yeah. at your sides. But guess what? There's going to be someone else who comes in the room yeah. and they're not going to glance at their sides. They're going to kill it. Yeah. So so I guess it just depends on like how bad do you want to work? Sure. Like how bad do you want the part? You yeah. know, because then you need, you need to work harder than anyone else because there are so many talented people out there. And the difference yeah. of, of whether or not you're going to be working is – if you are hardworking, like, right? Yeah, because there because there are so many talented people out there, like so many, you know, and that's something you can control. You can control whether or not you're off book. Like that's yeah. something you can you can do that. Well, these have been really really interesting ideas, and and it's been nice to see your perspective on on the auditioning <laughs> process. I've enjoyed it. These have been interesting ideas. Nobody <laughs> listened to Melanie. No, no, They've no. They've been interesting, but know, interesting. <laughs> the word interesting is a tricky word because it sounds like it's like, well, that's your idea. <laughs> I wouldn't do it that way. That's no. Interesting. I should. I'll, I'll rephrase that. These are great ideas. Thank you. And if you've enlightened <laughs> me into some things I haven't realized, yeah. and that's why it's great to have conversations with actors because you know as a director, um, I, I hope to and have learned good things from actors, and I hope to continue to learn good things from actors. But it's always good to say, you know, how, wh- where's, what's your paradigm? You know, how do you th- see things? How, how are you approaching it? What are you sensitive to? What are you picking up on? So this has all been really good. Yeah. Um, well, thank you for thank you. chatting with me this about the fun. auditioning process yeah. and, you know, getting used to the word no and, yeah, you know, yeah. rejection so and all those things. So much no. But he, because here's the thing, if you just keep swinging, eventually you're going to make a home run, right? right? You're going to hit the right. ball. So you just got to persevere, right? Absolutely. So, well, right before we close, please tell people, uh, where can they find you on social media? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and mm-hmm. Facebook. Mm-hmm. So my Instagram and Twitter handles are the same. It's Melanie two underscores stone i had to do two underscores because one underscore was already taken Ugh. by another melanie stone the worst okay anyway, yeah two anyway, underscores two okay. underscores and then um then i do have a facebook page if you just search melanie stone it, okay. it should pop up all right um, well you guys should definitely check out melanie stone's social media it's awesome they might even see a cool picture that we did together yes Tomb Raider picture. It's on her feed somewhere. Um, anyway, well, thanks guys for checking it out and uh, listening to us today. Um, I'm wishing you the very best of luck on your next film projects, and we'll talk to you soon. Yay! Do you have a cool fade out music? No. It's, it's this right here. Can I can I do some, some music for you? Right now, this is the end of the show. We're still talking. Well, I'll just kind of slowly fade it away. It's fading out.